Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde, welcome to Steppin' Out with updates on the New Orleans arts, restaurant, and entertainment scenes. Tonight we have with us Poppy Tucker of Louisiana Eats, heard on WWNO Radio. Hey, Poppy. Hi, Hi. Hi. and Ian McNulty, food writer for the Times Speaking New Orleans Advocate. And later on, we'll hear from music critic Keith Sparrow and theater critic Alan Mason. First up, Poppy, some sad news, huh? Oh gosh, I just wanted to send big both congratulations and my deepest consult consolences to the Chase family because they pulled off Holy Thursday yesterday, all to go. And this was the first Holy Thursday since Leah passed away, of course, so that alone was a difficulty. But last week, Stella's husband, Wayne Reese passed away, long time, very famous football coach at McDonough 35. I just don't know how poor Stella is dealing with the loss of both her mom and now her husband. I'm so sorry. And God bless him for giving us all gumbo zerbs yesterday. Now, Poppy, on to family meals that you can actually get delivered. Peggy, I'll tell you the truth. Doris Metropolitan has really been seducing me with their online food porn. It is the wickedest thing that they're offering from down there. Things like, well, they've got that butcher shop. So you can get just beautiful cuts of meat, like a bone-in 23-ounce ribeye for $45, a porterhouse for two for $65, and I know it's Easter weekend, so how about a rack of three lamb chops for just $40? And on top of that, they're offering all sorts of curated dining experiences. Um, everything from caviar and champagne to wine and cheese. And then dinner for two from Doris Metropolitan for $125, which includes bread service, appetizers, two steaks of your choice, and dessert. You can also get dinner for four for just $210, and you know, that's just basically double that. And the steaks come sous vide for you to finish on the grill. And what does that mean for the uninitiated? <laughs> that means that they're partially cooked and they're in a cryovac special package and all you have to do is slap them on the grill and they're sending great instructions so you can have that steak cooked exactly the way you like it off your own grill. And the sides, <laughs> oh, the sides you can add, like truffled polenta, mushroom ragu. It's Easter weekend, so of course there's asparagus, grilled veggies, and their a la carte menu is also available. Now, check this out. This is all available for pickup and delivery all over the greater New Orleans area, even on Easter Sunday. I mean, yum. Does it get, you can't get reservations usually at Doris Metropolitan. No. You have to get your own house now. That was a long time ago. That was the old Alpine restaurant. It was, oh. <laughs> and I know it's much fancier uh, these days. And um, uh, some family meal suggestions. Well, Peggy, this week I was really thinking about New Orleans and Louisiana in their homes. And, you know, we have to be there. We're, we're ordered to be there, right? Stay at home is the big thing unless you're going out for essential services. And thank goodness restaurants are still considered essential services. But this is a, a really interesting time in the history of our community where people are spending a lot of their time at home. Uh, you know, it's a tense time for sure. It's, it's a hard time to feel much confidence with so many jobs gone and so many answers hard to find. But I got to thinking that within people's homes, they do have this power, really this special power 
that they can share with people across the country, but that I think is really strong here in New Orleans and in Louisiana. And that's something that we connect with through our food, with each other for sure, but within our households. Uh, now, this is, this is something that people can use in good times and they can burnish in bad times. We have something really powerful in our heritage and our culture. And I know Poppy feels this, I know you feel this, Peggy. It's that thing that, that, that we love to share and that we know, we know food. Well, what are we always lacking? Is the time to really dig into it. It's the time to really pass it on, the time to really kind of refresh it. And what do we have now? We have time. <laughs> For a lot of us, time is that thing that's always escaping us, but now it's starting to pile up. We can use that time to pass things on in our kitchens, in our New Orleans and Louisiana. Like recipes. And I know you're a fan of cast iron cooking, aren't you? Cast iron cooking, I think, is the soul of so much Louisiana cooking. You know, it's that dragging that skillet out from the back of the cupboard, getting something going in there. And how many of these recipes that we identify with really are family recipes. There's stories attached to them. This is the time to take those stories out of your head and transmit them to the next generation, to the kids that you have in your house with you, to the kids that you're Zoom meeting with <laughs> across the country because they're somewhere else, to your neighbors who are sharing things with over the porch. Uh, everybody has something in their house and their tradition in their kitchen that they can share. And this is- I know you love uh, uh, crawfish etouffee. You're a fan and Poppy is too. That's a great dish, but it takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, now we have some of that time. <laughs> Luckily, we still do have access to a lot of our great Louisiana ingredients. Uh, you know, if there's a crawfish boil happening <laughs> this, uh, this week, this weekend during our traditional peak for that time, Spend a little more time picking those crawfish. Make Sounds that Sounds good. Uh, Poppy, I know you wanted to point out, and, and very fortunately in our community, one of many uh, groups who are trying to do good works, and you even have a little video, huh? You know, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, Al Copeland Jr., what a philanthropic man he is. He's just started a new program with the Copeland Foundation called Be a Hero, Thank a Hero. Let's see about that. Every day, thousands of Louisiana doctors, nurses, EMTs, and other courageous responders are bravely showing up for work. They are on the front lines, isolated from their families, tirelessly fighting the battle against COVID-19. They are our healthcare heroes. Selfless men and women who don't have enough time to think about where their next meal will come from, let alone make groceries and cook. Let's do what Louisiana does best. Let's step up and feed our healthcare heroes. We may be self-isolating behind closed doors, but we can open our hearts. Be a hero. Thank a hero. Donate today. So Al himself kicked off with a $10,000 donation to his foundation. And what they're doing is they're sending care packages to first responders. And these care packages include things like fresh produce and dairy and meats and even TP and paper towel, those sought after things. Donations are accepted in $5 increments. Donations of $500 or more will actually send hot meals to hospitals across the state. So that's be a hero, thank a hero .com. Kudos to Al Copeland Jr. And then also continued kudos to Devin DeWolf and his crew of Red Bean. He has done the most brilliant thing, Peggy, because he is taking every donated dollar and he's actually getting it to go three ways to do good. So he's paying restaurants full price for meals. Those meals are being delivered by out of work musicians and the meals are going to hospitals. They're servicing every hospital across the New Orleans area. He's hmm. operating on a very short budget of just two or three days at a time. So please send Devin a contribution that's feed the frontline nola.org and he's replicating his effort from that website people have started this in baton rouge in shreveport in pensacola i mean what a great idea out of new orleans that's multiplying now 
Well, since we've been talking about home cooking, let's talk about, I'd love to hear what you all, your favorite cookbooks are. Let's start with um, Ian. Well, Peg, I think this one is, is one that I draw down so often from my shelf, La Bouche Creole by Leon Sonnet. Uh, just a classic filled with New Orleans recipes, uh, ingredients for which still easy to find here in our local grocery stores and loaded with stories. I love reading the stories about the recipes in here, about him going to the French market in the old days with his, with his family and just the, the inside stuff on, on all these great New Orleans recipes. And then I'm gonna say Donald Link's Down South may be the cure to missing some of his restaurants. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, Donald Link has two cookbooks. Real Cajun is also excellent. Uh, this one seems to have a few more of the recipes that you would find at his restaurants, which are not currently open. Uh, but if you were looking to replicate one of those or just get some inspiration from his style, that's one to go for. And then finally, you can tell a really good cookbook has been used and used when the cover is missing. Like actually, <laughs> my dog might have taken that one off. But this is Bean by Bean by Crescent Dragon Wagon. Not local like the other two I've, I mentioned. Wait, Crescent Dragon Wagon? That's yeah. her name, yes. The reason I love this book is A, I live with a vegetarian, pescatarian. Uh, but B, how many, how many dishes are we cooking right now to stretch things along a little bit, to last? Uh, you know, beans are perfect for that. And this has a lot of recipes that uh, will give you a different edge to the same old stuff. And really creative, global kind of recipes inspired in there. So those three picks, I think would get you through okay, just the thank, you. thank you. How about you, Poppy? Well, my number one go-to book is by the woman I studied cooking with, Madeline Kamen. Her original making of a cook, there isn't a recipe that you could want that doesn't come from it's definitely the European genre that you're not going to find there. Then Rudy Lombard's seminal book, Creole Feast, where you can find the recipes from the masters and the great masters of that time were all the African-American chefs who were untold in kitchens all across New Orleans and Austin Leslie, Leah Chase, Annie Laura Squalls, all of those wonderful people and their delicious recipes are in that treasure of a book. And last of all, well, what are we all doing in our kitchens right now? We're cooking up a storm. And nobody's a better authority on that topic than our good friends, Marcel Bienvenu and Judy Walker. I love that book. And if there was ever a time for it, now's the time. <laughs> Before we depart, just for a few minutes, because we'll be coming back later. Uh, Ian, I know uh, we were talking the other day about some of your favorite tortillas and talk yes. about family style. Could you give us a little PS to that? Oh uh, yes, that would be uh, Maui Tortilleria. This is a place in Metairie from Chef Will Avalar, who made his name at Merrill Restaurant, but then went off with his dad on their own and started their own tortilla factory. Tiny little operation, not bigger than the size of this half parlor here. Uh, but they crank out amazing fresh corn tortillas. And uh, since the shutdown, they've really uh, changed their business model to be a tortilla factory but also uh, to be a, a, a taqueria, a pupuseria. They're making uh, some great little uh, Latin American foods that they'll deliver, you can go pick up. Uh, but the big thing is the tortillas still. You can get them by the pound. Uh, when I get them, uh, I love it when they're, they're still a little bit toasty warm and you can just rip one of those open dry. But for home cooking, having a good stash of tortillas around is a, not a bad thing this time of year. All right, we'll be back soon for our picks of the week. But first up though, Last week, we lost a real New Orleans icon, of course, Ellis Marcellus, teacher, pianist, composer, patriarch. Here is Keith Spera of the Times Speaking Union New Orleans Advocate with his remembrance. All right, folks, Keith Spera here. Since the last time we checked in, the big news on the New Orleans music scene is unfortunately sad news. That, of course, is the passing of the great Ellis Marcellus. Now, Ellis was a piano player by trade, a great jazz piano player but he was also the patriarch of the local jazz community. And that's not just because he was literally the father of four prominent jazz musicians, but over the course of his multi-decade decade career, he taught dozens and dozens of students uh, at, the, at Xavier University, at the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, and at the University of New Orleans, where he spent 13 years as the director of the jazz studies program there at UNO. In fact, he helped kind of build that program and saw a whole bunch of students pass through uh, the school there under his tutelage. 
Now, some of the people he taught over the years included Harry Connick Jr., Terrence Blanchard, uh, who right there are two of the most prominent entertainers to come out of New Orleans in the last few decades, but many, many more, and of course his sons as well. He had a huge influence on his sons, shaping both their lives and careers. That'd be Branford, Winton, Delfeo, and Jason. He and his wife Dolores raised two other sons who are not musicians, so the four that are musicians, of course, get all the press, but uh, he, uh, he raised a total of six sons, which of course is an undertaking unto itself. Now, Ellis, you know, he had been a fixture on the scene since the 60s. He was one of the few guys in town playing modern jazz, playing bebop-derived music in town then. I mean, this had been always been a traditional jazz town, a Dixieland town, but Ellis very much took his cues from more contemporary players. And so he put out his first record of modern jazz in 1963, did all kinds of cool stuff in the 60s, had a gig at the Playboy Club on Iberville Street just off of Bourbon, uh, Played there with two different combos in the 60s, but also played all kinds of venues around town. Did hotel gigs, club gigs, all the festivals. He spent 30 years, 30 years playing just about every Friday night at Snug Harbor down on Frenchman Street. Sets at 8 and 10 o'clock. Um, like I said, he did that for decades. He only retired from that gig this past December when he was 85 years old. So he had kept up that gig for a long time. You know, he retired from UNO in 2001, but he still kept playing. And like I said, was still playing at Snug Harbor every Friday night, pretty much up until December. Now he had planned to keep playing intermittently as a special guest with other people, uh, but coronavirus pandem pandemic pretty much cut those plans off. First by shutting down all the clubs, and then unfortunately by claiming Mr. Marcellus apparently as one of its victims. So of course, a huge loss. I had the pleasure of spending time with him been interviewing him numerous times over the years. Always a gentleman, always a great guy to talk to. Uh, could expound on a variety of topics, had a really interesting perspective on the history of New Orleans, the history of jazz, racial relations. You know, he kind of had a front row seat for all that stuff. Um, so a really interesting guy to talk to. Uh, and his death, of course, is a huge loss. I mean, he, is one of, he was one of those elders of the community. And you can't just create those. Uh, they have to do become over the decades. They become an elder, and he certainly was one and uh, will be sorely, sorely missed. So I, I would assume that come fall, uh, when the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival takes place, there will be some sort of tribute to Ellis out there. Um, but quite frankly, it would have been, I think, far preferable had we been able to listen to Ellis play at the Jazz Fest during its regularly scheduled slot. Um, so unfortunately, that's not the case. And speaking of which, other festival news, the Buku Festival here in town, this was kind of a, I like to call it the kid brother of the local festival scene, the Buku Festival, staged over at Mardi Gras World over two days every March. We do about 17,000 people a day, mostly hip hop and electronic dance music, uh, you know, very colorful, interesting festival. Well, they had announced a few weeks back that they were postponing the March event until Labor Day weekend. But now they've announced that they're canceling the 2020 event entirely. So there will not be a Buku Festival in, uh, in 2020. They're going to come back in the spring of 2021. So Buku is another kind of coronavirus casualty, unfortunately. Now, on the flip side, musicians making the best of the situation. So many of them are doing live streaming events online that you can tune into and often tip the musicians, kind of a virtual tip jar through Venmo or PayPal or one of those things, which is a great way to support musicians who aren't making any money playing live right now. So I highly recommend you seek those out. The WWOZ website has a comprehensive list of live streaming events, uh, as does the Offbeat Magazine website. A couple worth mentioning coming up here on Friday, Samantha Fish, the blues guitarist, She's doing a thing every Friday at noon on her Facebook page. Samantha Fish, uh, kind of a uh, an, an expatriate from St. Louis that landed here in New Orleans a few years back and has become a big part of the local scene. Again, she's playing at noon on Friday. And then Friday night at 8 p.m. Central, Big Frida, of course, the Queen of Bounce, very colorful character, uh, is doing a, uh, a I guess we'd call it a dance party on Friday night starting at 8 p.m. So if you want to pick me up on Friday nights, check out Big Frida on uh, on Facebook page and as well as Instagram. So that's it for music for this week. Uh, again, 
you, you can't hear it live, but you can hear it online. And I encourage you to go check it out. And special thanks to WWL TV for that montage. And now here's Alan Smason of the Crescent City Jewish News and theatercriticism.com with his report for the week. Thank you, Peggy. This week, I started something very, very interesting. It's a live stream broadcast, and it's for the benefit of the theater community of New Orleans. Uh, it is called NOLA Theater Folk, uh, and you can see it on the Facebook group titled NOLA Theater, R-E, instead of E-R, Folk, as well as theatercriticism.com's Facebook fan page. We'll be streaming these out on 7 o'clock uh, tonight, but we're going to be switching over to an 8 o'clock slot on Mondays and Fridays for next week. Uh, these live streams are intended to support and inform the greater New Orleans theater community. This past Monday, for instance, we spoke with JPAS Artistic Director Dennis Asaf, and along with some of the costume designers that uh, were actually making masks for first responders, and uh, we thought that this was really an interesting topic and one that should have been mentioned. Matter of fact, Lena Prima, who made my own mask, stopped by to surprise them and sort of compare notes on how to make a good proper face mask for a, a coronavirus. In any event, uh, we also had uh, Patrick Jendusa from Loyola University and Carol Eshelman from Rummel High School talk about the difficulties with uh, trying to teach theater through the internet. Uh, and of course, we did have a little special guest, Elizabeth Parent, who is of uh, Tulane and Loyola faculties, came over to surprise them. This uh, coming uh, time, uh, Friday night, of course, we're talking with uh, Anthony Bean, his theater company, about the summer intensive program that he's going to be dealing with uh, with the city of New Orleans. He also will be talking uh, about the difficulties his company's been experiencing. And of course, Margot Fanning and Catherine Talbot from Two Ducks Productions. But Monday night, keep in mind, at 8 o'clock, we're going to be having having our own local star, Brian Bat of Stage and Screen, will be talking with us, and we'll have some special guests as well. So stick around for that. Now, Wednesday, I met with all of the major theater uh, artistic directors and executive directors, from the largest to the smallest, as we all got together and hear about how this corona, uh, cor coronavirus epidemic is affecting them. Uh, several companies like Summer Lyric at Tulane are preparing statements on what shows are in danger and what might still be able to be produced. But uh, keep in mind, they're all getting together now. The group, which was organized by A.J. Allegra, uh, essentially was to hope uh, that they could uh, iron out any potential conflicts once theaters are allowed to open and, and try to help each other during this time of need. Uh, let's also mention some bad news. Came from Broadway. The Broadway League announced this week that all Broadway theaters will remain shuttered until at least the first week in June. So how do theater lovers keep themselves occupied? Well, we mentioned Broadway HD. Among the items for people to check out, though, besides that, uh, on the Internet, the amazing John Krasinski had some good news. That's the name of his program. Hamilton fans were amazed when he reached out to his wife, Emily Blunt, who played Mary Poppins, of course, opposite Lin-Manuel Miranda in Mary Poppins Returns. And she had um, a little bit of an offer to a nine-year-old who wanted to essentially uh, bemoan the fact that she had missed out on seeing Hamilton. Uh, and so Lin-Manuel Miranda popped in and Zoom-bombed him, along with the entire original cast of Hamilton. And if you haven't seen this, it's amazing. The entire cast sings the opening number of Alexander Hamilton. Uh, this was an amazing broadcast. I also wanted to alert everyone uh, to some free shows that are going on. This week we saw uh, One Man, Two Governors with uh, James Corden that was free. And there's a reading on YouTube, look it up, of Lips Together, Teeth Apart from Terrence McNally that uh, was a reading that was done with Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Zachary Quinto, and um, uh, Celia Keenan-Bolger, among others. So it was uh, basically a, a really wonderful reading. I think you all will enjoy seeing that if you want to see some good theater uh, again, not a musical, but if you like musicals, keep in mind, there's another uh, concern, streamingmusicals.com, that's now coming out with rentals for $4.99, or you can buy the entire download, the entire musical for like $19.99. Uh, coming up, uh, they have Pride and Prejudice for free to start out for people who signed up, and they're also going to have other uh, programs uh, such as Emma. Uh, a musical of Emma, believe that or not. And um, I just you know, wanted to keep in mind also that even uh, straight theater, uh, like the Globe Theater, they're going to be having a production of Hamlet coming live. That'll be on April the 19th. 
uh, from the Globe Theater in London. So uh, there's a lot going on in theater. We're going to have to catch up with it on the Internet, though. Uh, please check out my live streams and check out the Internet through YouTube. That's it, Peggy. And now it's time for our Picks of the Week. Here's Keith Spear. All right. My quick pick for this week is Tim Lachlan's new CD, New Standards. Now, what's neat about this CD is that it is a collection of all original traditional jazz recordings. Tim Lachlan, of course, very fluent clarinet player here in town, one of the best, plays traditional jazz, which often an album of traditional jazz consists of standards of songs you've heard for decades. Tim believes that the music needs new compositions in order to stay vital, so he's written a whole album's worth here. Now, he did one of these albums uh, 17 years ago. He did a record of all original material called Isle of Orleans. This new one, New Standards, is essentially the follow-up, the 17 years in the making follow-up to that last one. Now, on this record, you can hear echoes of Pete Fountain. In fact, there's a song dedicated to Pete called For Pete's Sake. Uh, you can hear echoes of Sidney Bechet. You can hear echoes of uh, the way Jelly Roll Morton wrote songs in the latter part of his career. But again, this is all done within the context of brand new traditional jazz compositions. Again, it's Tim Lachlan, clarinet player. The record is called New Standards, and it is available through his website, timlachlan.com. That's L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, lachlan.com. So there you go. Enjoy. Peggy, my pick this week is a little bit unusual. In memoriam for Ellis Marcellus Jr.'s passing due to the effects of pneumonia from COVID-19, the faculty, staff, and students got together and put some memorial bunting around the NOCA sign in memorial for such a great educator and teacher and, and wonderful worldwide renowned musician. So again, I wanted to share that with everybody. Thank you, Poppy, for sending that my way. And in this time, I'd also like to wish everybody a happy Passover as well as a happy Easter. And now it's time for Poppy. Well, you know what's coming Sunday, the Easter Bunny, and that means lots and lots of Elmer's Easter candy. So eat all of it you can. Relish every bite. That's it, Peg. Mm, if, it only, <laughs> if only we had the bunny back with us this year. <laughs> Yum. And don't forget to listen to Louisiana Eats, where we're doing continuing COVID-19. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Our coverage on the virus continues also on Louisiana Eats. So thank you there. so much, Poppy. And now Ian. Good Friday, Easter Sunday, New Orleans, Louisiana, crawfish. Everywhere's got the Easter bunny. We have the Easter crawfish. And you're still going to see those red buggers all over the place. Curbside crawfish is a thing. Look for those DIY drive through operations that the Boiling Pros have going. Or hit up your favorite grocery store or market. The crawfish are still rolling in from Cajun country. It's a little piece of, of just normal Louisiana life we can keep on. Any, any particular favorites? Like I like Classies. How about you? I like the next one. Anybody who's got crawfish in front of me is, is the right person. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. And this week, my picks, the historic New Orleans collection with oral histories and rare images from the archive titled History from Home, hnoc.org. And thank you all so very much, Poppy and Ian, and of course, uh, Keith and Alan. We wish you all a very, very happy Easter. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. This program is sponsored in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support the arts and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Support for Steppin' Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. <laughs>